jednocześnie, żeby nie było za At the same time, without, so as not to have a too rosy a picture, I'd like to have Grażyna Kopińska from the Batory Foundation, from their anti-corruption program, Anna Mazgaj for Transforce and Society, and Krzysztof Zawek, who represents the Polish Green Network, Krzysztof Wychowałek, from the Polish Green Network. I won't ask uh, any specific questions. You've heard what the uh, previous uh, speakers have had to say, so maybe could you uh, comment? I saw you responding when they mentioned lobbying, but I won't begin with lobbying. What I would like to begin with is the problem of to what extent uh, our elected representatives have the mandate to represent us. Uh, and the, Well, yes, they do. Uh, we elected them, we voted for them. It's a democracy we're living in, but it's a different uh, problem whether in their four-year term they're to be uh, shut up in an ivory tower and use or rely only on their uh, decisions, on, their, on what they know. We believe that they should continue listening to the people, they should ask us what we think on this or that issue. But when uh, citizens send spam to members of parliament, this is uh, an allusion to uh, a recent event in Poland. Well, yes, that can be a problem, but just don't send spam to politicians. Uh, if you have anything to say, if you want to write to a politician, email a politician, then uh, make it substanti substantive. I also represent the uh, Civic Legislative Forum, and we believe that everyone, any, every citizen should have the right to know what the authorities, the government, are up to, what parliament is working on, what new law is in the pipeline, they need to know, and also to have a say, to be listened, to be heard, and get feedback. Uh, they need. They have the right to know what decision makers think about what citizens say. So the best way to hold these uh, universal consultations is an e-platform. Yes, you've seen it. I saw that e-platform that's developing or will be launched at the Ministry of the Economy is a very interesting tool, and I'm very happy that it's been uh, launched. I hope all of us will use it once it's up, including civil servants, of course, officials. Uh, the main advantage for me, as I see it, besides everybody who logs in, um, giving everybody the opportunity to say what they think, we will, in a transparent way, see what revisions are adopted, what amendments are adopted and by whom. So you can, the traceability of legislation, which is something Something that we've been calling for for a long time. So that's a step in the right direction. And as Pavel said, at the, as you said at the beginning, this is a pilot project that's being launched exclusively at the Ministry of the Economy. It will um, apply to acts of law developed, uh, drafted at the Ministry of the Economy. Whether uh, this will be implemented by all ministries and when, that's a fundamental question. But what if the government changes? What if the next government uh, has a different idea? What if the next uh, government uh, uh, won't want to uh, pursue this? And I want to point out or, or go back to what you've said already. The question of consulting acts of law in Poland is regulated at a very low level. Uh, the rule book uh, of the regulations of the Council of Ministers. So, uh, citizens, the people, I mean, of course, there are detailed regulations on environmental protection and so on, where uh, the people have the right to be consulted, but as a matter of principle, it's uh, hard to find these provisions in the rules. Yes, and uh, those who have separate acts, uh, for instance, the trilateral uh, commission or uh, acts on local government, government or environmental protection, there the situation is different. But in most uh, acts of law, the average uh, citizen the, um, can take part in the consultation process insofar as this uh, consultation is announced and uh, 
currently there is no requirement. It's just a question of goodwill. You can invite uh, people to uh, give their feedback, to weigh in, but there's no requirement to do so. So for years now, we've been calling to make these regulations, these facts, on the manner of conducting consultation on legislation. These ought to be made statutory. So it's a good thing that the Ministry of Justice is working on such a draft. Yes, I'm very happy that the Ministry is working on this draft, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed for its uh, success, even though I would have a lot of uh, remarks, comments on the project itself. But I do know that it's not uh, the mainstream uh, approach. The government generally tends to the rule books of the uh, the rule book of the Council of Ministers. It's it's seen as uh, sufficient, but I mean it's excessive control, perhaps. I mean I suppose if I could comment. Uh, but let me just uh, put in Article 4 of the Constitution does say that the people, the nation, has um, the power, and that's yes. So that's why it's worth uh, listening to the people. I don't know if I'll be able to add anything later on. Let me just say. Uh, Mensch refer to one thing that uh, was mentioned at the beginning of this conference, uh, namely the Open Government Partnership. Uh, the Batori Foundation, along with uh, a dozen other organizations, has uh, set up a coalition uh, so, so that Poland joins this uh, initiative. We want to join this initiative and we're writing to the Prime Minister and the replies we've been getting are surprising because the reply is that Poland is a sovereign state and as such it will join this initiative on its own rules. And so without of course, uh, accepting the uh, rules that this initiative has. So first, the idea is to draft an action plan and then apply. We uh, find this hard to understand, and we're very happy that at this conference uh, we've been given support uh, for our efforts to uh, join the OGP. We believe that this would help every citizen, all citizens, in their per in, in personal participation in the governance process. Yes, um, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very interesting, and uh, there's a lot of uh, other things I'd like to touch upon. Uh, first, I'd like to share a thought with you to the effect that this, this panel is very symptomatic of our agora, of our democratic forum, because as in any forum, the stage is uh, small and not everyone will fit, so we're talking in silos, minister to minister, uh, official to uh, and uh, civil society to civil society. So it's um, a kind of sort of qualified democracy. And whenever I see democracy qualified by anything, then I'm always uh, suspicious. But anyway, it's very good because um, the ministers uh, have stayed in the room, which doesn't always happen. But uh, I won't thank them for it. I think that it's natural for them to do so. While I think that I'd like to uh, reflect, comment on what the Minister of Justice uh, said, and that's what I'd also like to refer to, refer to what uh, Grzegorz Kopinska said, democracy in the 21st century is not a simple representative uh, function. Uh, these are um, I personally, and I suppose many people here, will not be deprived of my uh, civic uh, sense, civic uh, identity, which we have 24-7. It does seem to me that it is uh, worth our while to declare and talk about it, that uh, the uh, democracy that we are talking about here should not be a silo or sector-based democracy. Uh, 
Democracy requires for citizens to have access to broadly understood democracy mechanisms. I understand that this requires trust in officials and their knowledge of law, but that is only one side of the coin. The other is that um, I, as a citizen, also want to have access to uh, sources of the knowledge of law. And this is exactly why I am concerned with uh, what Grajena said, that attempts are made to change reality with the aid of small steps. So my question to our ministers would be, uh, can we actually count on uh, direct declaration of our government to the effect of uh, access to public information being a matter of systemic solutions and systemic perception. I do not wish to now declare whether what we would expect are legislative or other solutions. We are not, however, after it, I believe that, however, at this point, however, we are not talking about any kind of systemic solutions at all. The Better Regulations Program, as I say it, also uh, encourages officials to use it, and that is not a systemic solution at all, Get also given the fact that Polish democracy is in den indeed based on silos. There is another solution here that would that, I, as I see it, directly stems from the first one. The problem is complex. We may indeed perceive uh, social consultations as described by Minister Govin, that it is the entire, simply a part of a whole. Nevertheless, I would like to understand whether we are traveling in the sound direction I really liked. A metaphor used by Antwin Bendik, who said that uh, rebel management is also the role and function of the state. Indeed, I have the right of disliking something I see in public space. So, but uh, we should, uh, we, you can manage rebel. At, in a manner typical for actors, a last of the minute and fly by your seat kind of thing, but you can also management, manage rebel in a much better and more organized fashion. So, um, well, do you mean the, the uh, divide and rule kind of uh, approach? Well, uh, the, ultimately that, that choice lies with central administration and our officials. It is for them to choose whether we should apply the divide and rule principle or whether we shall be much more sy systematic and systematized about it. I have a question to Minister Hawade, being a person specializing in the topic. Does he at all see a possibility of reversing that kind of rhetoric? Can we, do we actually have a chance of uh, talking to one another. I don't think that social consultations ought to be uh, seen as a not very useful topic. What we need here is a very um, modern way of perceiving the world. But uh, democracy goes beyond voting every four years. And the final matter I would like to touch upon at this point, we are talking about mechanisms and democracy here. We have also been talking throughout the day about personalized democration. I would like to, I know that it is not only my question, I would also want to ask Minister Govin how he sees uh, democracy. I know that is not only my question. Well, I understand that you're fighting for um, well democracy. Well, with regard to social consultations, I have tremendous expectations. I have tremendous expectations of. Uh, that portal. I have not seen that portal, the better regulations portal yet. Nevertheless, I hope that it shall improve 
the opportunities tak, tak, for... Tak, umówmy się. Uh, to jest problem taki. Ja, ja na co dzień pracuję w takiej małej lokalnej organizacji. Pozorządu. Smaller non-governmental organizations. A small NGO is my daily bread. And from our viewpoint, social consultations are nothing but a formality. As an ecological um, organization, we receive a variety of documents from the Ministry of Environment, and we are asked by the Ministry to provide comment there to uh, within the span of five to seven days, which we do not do because it doesn't make any sense. And the voice of such organizations as um, ours is, uh, well, is um, a, a matter of little importance. The voice of such organization is, uh, are not really taken into account, not to mention the fact that not every organization is capable of uh, having on its staff an employee whose sole task would be to go and attend governmental committee sessions and would, would monitor that work on a day-to-day -day basis. I believe that uh, this is something, this is a world where at the stage of a draft we should be absolutely provided with an opportunity of uh, commenting on it on a day-to-day um, -day basis rather than uh, receiving a 100-page PDF document uh, that we didn't, cannot really do any, uh, much with. In order to re refer to it, we should definitely start uh, writing, I don't know, a PhD thesis on the subject, I believe. Uh, I would like to uh, go to, back to uh, in access to public information. I cannot hear the speaker, I'm sorry. Translation shall proceed once I have the microphone. So I want to comment on technical matters concerning the um, providing access to uh, state administration database and its resources. The um, portal of uh, common court rulings is definitely developing. In my work, I am using the, um, the rulings of uh, courts and that is very a very um, useful tool. Uh, well, with regard to my organization, I do not yet know what I could use that um, what what I could use that for. I understand that, however, that there are a variety of organizations that. Uh, could use such documents. In uh, Poland, we do not have a law of precedent. So, uh, well, I tried to use it. Uh, I read a few court rulings. I do not know how useful that shall be. Obviously, you can use and uh, search the document to the extent provided for by the author. I could, do not see the option of uh, tapping into the um, actual source of da or database. I do not know to what extent your foundation have decided to do so. I understand that uh, your foundation have uh, found a way to uh, well to to evade certain difficulties. Well, please do not use the word evade because it suggests something illegal. Well, okay, but the point is that definitely um, it is very difficult for us to use a variety of uh, source of information. For example, you have to enter codes, and I do, uh, try and ask the question, how does that relate to people who are blind or hard of seeing? But uh, with regard to providing open access to resources from the viewpoint of my organization, which has definitely changed our lives, is the um, life since last year, is the... Uh, National Court Register of Businesses. Well, maybe that is not very important from the viewpoint of an overall strategy or activities, but that is uh, a very important thing for us. We could actually save several hundred slotties per annum and to use that money for purposes of other statutory activities. 
Um, we need national um, court, the national court of of, of, of business, reg of the national court register of business operations, are used and are necessary for whatever kind of official activity you might engage in, including sending uh, in so on some oca occasions, including sending some stuff by mail, by regular mail. And every time we had to go and see an official and pay money. So I believe that the online access to the National Court Register of Businesses is very, very uh, valuable. You simply go online, you get an excerpt from the, from the register. I believe that this is something that uh, is very, very valuable. Uh, but uh, the bitter pill, not really a pill, but a bunch of pills, it is unusable. It is an excellent database. It has been set up for very specific purpose, to have access to information about foundations, associations, and companies. Amber Gold. This is uh, something that uh, helps remind us that some companies don't file their uh, reports at all. You have to know the name, you have to uh, know the number. You cannot check Mr. Smith, for example, and which uh, um, board of directors he is member of. Well, I understand that from the uh, viewpoint of the internet is very important and probably from the, and interesting from the viewpoint of the of courts it's, 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 it's important. But the point is that I believe that it is it's uh, hugely important for us for to allow citizens to make their own decisions how they should be searching that database. And the same thing goes for rulings, be it of administrative courts, being of other courts. I would want other entities to provide me with such an option to uh, actually provide me with information following a search. Let me add something here. Now we have a case before administrative of courts. I do not wish to act for the general inspector who would be much better at doing it. Uh, his position has been made part of administrative decisions, then um, also made part of an assessment system. But you have to understand that the um, information responsibility is identical for all citizens and for all companies. In order to uh, actually conform to that responsibility, uh, every company would have to spend one to three million slotties, which ultimately means that from the financial viewpoint that does not pay. Now, were we to adopt and agree that something that is uh, formally uh, open, well, there is no such thing as a formal openness, but once we decided to talk about it, we could stop and think about it, and then we could ask the question uh, whether I should also, um, I have the duty of notifying a lobbyist forming part of the, um, who has been registered with the National Register of Lobbies that uh, his or her data are now being processed. But uh, can a lobbyist expect of me that if that lobbyist is going to be willing to do so, um, he, or she could um, request me to remove him or her from a register that I'm currently keeping, and will that impact his or her privacy? Or, for example, can a me mem member of parliament not be made part or asked to be, uh, asked to be not made part? part of the uh, parliamentary metering systems. Probably this is something that we could uh, deem unacceptable. Well, uh, in recap, I would like to say that uh, our postulate and our organization's postulate and others is as follows. If someone does not want his or her data to be processed, uh, that data ought to be processed and provided in a way providing for an option of searching that data in a different matter. Now, in, in closure, with regard to access to public information, uh, let me re refer to the lobby, lobbies that you had just mentioned. Well, 
rozumienie tego, kto ma prawo I believe that the understanding of uh, who should have access to public information is very broad. The Act of Law says that anyone can have access to such information. It is not only about a lobbyist, but also a business person who wants to earn money with that information. Well, that is not, there is nothing wrong with that because once that person earns, it's got, that is going to contribute to, to the Poland's GDP. So it is not really a problem to provide information, access to information uh, that has been generated uh, with the assistance of our taxes. Well, that is... Um, a private matter, anyone is anyone. Another matter of interest, something that may also be mentioned at uh, subsequent panels. The definition of every person or each person is also very broad. There are examples of organizations uh, of the kind that I work for and those organizations themselves receive um, requests from the public administration. Possibly we sometimes provide data that is not entirely consistent with um, the law, but that is, uh, seems to be a penalty or a form of penalty for having asked the public administration for some data. Once we file for information, then um, the official proceeds with as a reciprocative uh, asking the foundation to provide a scan of all documents. The minister wanted to respond. Well, unfortunately, I will not be able to attend the further part of your conference, but I do not wish you to walk away uh, with a sense of a silo format of our organization. With regard to the system itself, please be patient. Everything costs money. With regard to the, um, the overall system, we are definitely going to, to set up a search engine for the court business register of businesses. We are open to consultations. Well, you cannot do anything and everything at once. Well, small steps or systemic solutions. Well, definitely the e-document well, I do agree with you that what we need are system solutions. We definitely need the uh, Auto Deregulation Act of Law. This is definitely a form of... Uh, preventing the walk away from the principle of transparency of how we operate. Today, indeed, uh, we ask the question ourselves. Another government will come into force. We are going to have different people in force. Deregulation is definitely an, an issue. What we need is a deregulation act of law, but the deregulation act of law cannot be amended um, very quickly. Um, we should definitely be uh, declaring whether the openness and openness to social, so, social consultation, for example, is uh, the philosophy of our government, um, or it is, or is it just a private matter of Minister Hawade and my and my own? Uh, well, a declaration uh, such declarations can only be made by a prime minister. I do not feel authorized to make such declarations. But I do believe that we are going to be embarking on. Uh, activities to deregulate, and this is what our government does. Uh, thanks to the fact that I have become the Minister of Justice as uh, the Prime Minister had justified, um, he, well, the Prime Minister had said it publicly that he appointed me Minister of Justice because of, I am privately a deregulation freak.
So this government definitely has deregulation intentions. Ms. Kopinska said that uh, what is now being done is not representative for the government main mainstream. Uh, definitely our rationale is complex. Together with the minister, with my advisor, Minister Barst, we have decided to uh, establish uh, or to set up a catch-22, uh, which shall say that the prime minister can do anything and everything possible. This has to be uh, said explicitly that it is a, the ultima ratio rather than prima ratio. The prime minister not only this prime minister, but any other prime minister, if walking away from um, legislative principles, will have to be absolutely aware that uh, the that the law is sometimes uh, well that the gaps in in the law are identified in a variety of manners. This would require. I do not wish to become depersonalized, but Ms. Kopinska already told you that it is not sufficient to be elected. It is, uh, you have to then consult your decisions. I wish to say that first and foremost, I meet citizens many times. Uh, I organize many meetings as a minister. For example, yesterday, I attended a meeting with 12, I'm sorry, the, 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 the I cannot hear the speaker. Translation shall proceed once I can hear the speaker. I understand that received tens of thousands of emails uh, protesting against such forms of voting. I received tens of thousands of emails supporting my position. I believe that it is very important, important for citizens to make conscious choices. I believe that it is important for citizens not only to vote for a specific um, party, but for, for specific politicians as well. I was not number one on the civic platforms list uh, during the most recent elections, uh, but I got more votes than people, than the person at number one, and I do believe that 60,000 people in Krakow uh, who voted for me are well aware of my um, of my opinions. Uh, these people know that I am a supporter of liberalization, that I will always support several very simple traditional values. I am absolutely um, I am bound to the liability to, uh, to my own beliefs, but also liability to the 60,000 people who voted for me. I wish to apologize for the technical problems. Well, ladies and gentlemen, are you satisfied with the response? Okay. Thank you, Minister. And I wish to thank our panelists, and I would like to thank our audience for attending this part. Let us take a break.